lesson, I will be discussing to you how are you going to create a LAN cable. So this is a good example of a LAN cable. This is the reason why you have a connection of an internet to your computer coming from the router or a certain modem. Now, how are we going to create a LAN cable or a UTP cable? There are two processes that has been discussed in our lesson. You can create a LAN cable through a straight-through pattern or a crossover pattern. What is the difference between a straight-through and a crossover pattern? When we say straight-through, this is commonly used for a client-to-server type of network. Therefore, there is a server who is responsible in manipulating or seeing all the files that is being connected to the server and those are what we call now the client. The crossover is commonly used for two computers only while in the straight-through pattern or the client server it is more than three computers. If you're going to use a crossover pattern there are only two computers that is connected to one another meaning to say those two computers can see each other. Computer one can see the file which is being stored or kept in computer number two while in computer two can see as well the file that is being kept or stored in computer number one now what are the different things that we need to prepare for us to create a LAN cable first you have to prepare or you have to provide a LAN tester this is the reason why you can check already whether the LAN cable that you created is really functioning well or not. Then, you also have to prepare a crimping tool. The crimping tool is the one responsible of locking the RJ45 to the UTP cable. You can use as well the crimping tool for cutting or slicing the cable wires. You also have to prepare a UTP cable. So this is step 5. UTP or what we call the untwisted shielded pair. You have to prepare as well an RJ45. So this is a good example of an RJ45. See, this is the one that you're going to insert to your NIC port or the network interface card which can be located at the back of the system unit or at the side of your laptop. You can also use a splice tool or a splice saw or a trimmer or a scissor. Now, take note of the following. Whenever you are working, always maintain the OHS. And one of them is to avoid injuries. So let us all be very vigilant whenever we are using those tools like this one, a sharp tools for us to avoid or prevent any injuries or cutting ourselves or someone who is near beside us. Also, whenever we are using the crimping tool, make sure that you're going to hold it properly. Now, what are the different steps that we need to do for us to create a LAN cable? First, you have to cut both ends of the LAN cable. So, let's cut both ends of the UTP cable. You can use a crimping tool. So, this part is the cutter. So, Make sure that you're not going to cut yourselves. You can also use the splice tools or the scissor. Just make sure that if you're going to cut the UTP cable, you're just going to cut or remove the wires or this body, the shell, the outside part of the UTP cable. So let's try to do it now. So if you're going to cut this one, just cut at least one inch of the wire. You can also use this one, this part. part. So see the circle one? So let's try. So you can do this. 
Just put it inside the circle, circle part. There. There. So you can twist that to remove it. See, it has been removed already. So this is the body, and this is the part of the UTP cable, which can be located inside the UTP cable. Then do the same at the other end. So both ends has been cut already. What you need to do now is to untwist each wires. There are four colors of the wires that you can see there. That is why it is being called as unshielded twisted pair. For in every wire, there is a corresponding two colors, untwisted pair. So let's say for example, the first color is the orange and the orange one. So see, we have the two colors. See, just untwist it. So they will be removed apart. See. So from one, they become two. The opposite of two become one. Okay? So let's start with orange. Then orange one. So you just have to straighten this up by simply holding this part so that it will not be cut. So straighten up. Do the same in the other color. So this is the stripe white, white orange. There. So I have there the first color, which is orange. The second color, which is orange white. Now let's proceed to the third color. This time I would like to twist the blue and the green one. So this is the so I have their orange, orange white. Then I will be placing beside the orange white the green color, the plain green. So there, I have there already the green. Then I will be removing, let's say for example, the blue one. So this one. Now just pull this down. This white one, you will not be needing this one. So just remove this one. You can cut that one. Okay, so let's go back to orange, orange white, then green. This time I would like to place beside color green the blue white. Placing blue white there. Then beside the blue white, I will be placing blue, then green white. Then the last color, again this white one, the red one, you will not be needing that one, so you can simply remove or cut that one. Make sure that you're not going to cut yourself again, so please be careful. There. This time, I will be placing the brown white beside the blue one. Okay, wait on, hold on. Now, please take note of the arrangement of the color. Since we're going to create a straight through cross or a straight through pattern, since we're going to create a straight through pattern, the pattern should be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, then 8A. Eight, eight. Meaning to say, if my first color here is orange, the first color here should be orange as well. If my second color here is white orange, therefore my second color here should be white orange. And so on and so forth. That is a straight through pattern. So if what will be the arrangement of the color here, that should be the arrangement of the colors at the other ends. So here. So you just have to straighten this up. So do this one to straight the lines. 
so that it will be placed inside the RJ45 height. Now, another thing that you need to remember is this one. Please take a look at this one. See, make sure that they have both the same height or the same length. So, if this will be the output, if they are not in the same height, then you have to cut them so that it will be behaving the same height. You can use the cutter. Make sure that you're not going to cut yourself. So cut it. Give it. See, you will hear a sound that it has been cut already. There. See. Make sure that you're going to straighten them off. See, the orange one will be a little bit higher than the other color. So, again, you have to cut them. Make sure that you're going to cut yourself. Then, if you think that they have the same height already or the same length, then that's the time that you're going to insert them in your RJ45. Now, make sure that if you're going to use an RJ45, you have this, this one. See? This one. See? That one. The one that you're going to press. Make sure that you're going to place this at the back. So, if you're going to place the wires, it should be this one. So, place it like this one. Then, push it. Now, another thing that we need to remember is make sure that a little bit of the wire should be placed inside the RJ45. Okay? Now, how are you going to check if this has been placed properly already? You can look at this one. So, that one. Try to check. Check if they are really been placed properly. You can see at the side. You can also see at the other side. So check. Let's see. There. Let's place it. So then check if they're really. See, you can see there are different colors. So a little bit blurred in your part. But in your part, just take a look at this one. Make sure that they are being placed properly. So if you think that they are being placed properly, then you have to lock the RJ45. How are you going to lock them? So, this will be the part of the RJ, of the crimping tool. See the part? See? Okay. Now, the next thing that you're going to do now is to grip the RJ45 to lock it. Now, take a look at the part of the, R, of the crimping tool. See? The other side. See? Now, how are you going to lock that one? You use this face. Wherein you can see something similar to an ear. So, let's place that. This is the ears or the ear part of the RJ45. Place it here. See? There. Can you see it? A little bit blurry. There. See? Then, after that, grip it to lock it. Sometimes, you might hear a sound, a thick sound, that it has been locked or made. So, make sure that you're going to grip it so that this will be locked. Okay. Then, push it just like this one to remove the RJ45 to the pimping tool. Just make sure that you're, going, you're not going to cut yourself. So, see, it has been locked already. See? Now, just do the same at the other side. Okay, let's do it. The colors should be, the arrangement of the color is orange, orange-white, green, blue-white, blue, green-white. Blue, green then we have brown, then brown-white. So there.
If you're done already with the RJ45 and the UTP cable, let's test it now. So using the tester. So you have to turn it on. Based on the tester, you can see there are different numbers. Then this is the indicator. It will light. Since that is a straight through pattern, the pattern should be 1-1. One, one. So they will light at the same time. So if this will be 1, the color of this one will be 1 as well. 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on and so forth until they reach number 8. So let's try it. Let's turn it on. This is the on and off button. See. You know that it will light already. There will be an indicator of the light. Then you have to place it there, you see. So let's place it like this one. So the ears. And the other side. There. Okay. Now. This should light. So what? So if that colors or the LED light appears in the tester, meaning to say, the LAN cable that you created has been created successfully. You can already use that one if you would like to connect this one from your router going to the system unit. But apparently, this is a short one. So if you're going to use a UTP cable, make sure that you're going to use a little bit longer. Do not use this kind or this size. This is just an example. So or those are the steps on how you're going to create a straight through pattern. Let us now proceed to cross off. So you will just repeat the steps that has been conducted and performed on one Now, in a straight through pattern, if what will be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth colors here, that should be the first, second, up to the last number or last color at the other end. But since we're talking about crossover, we're in when we talk about crossover, two computers are connected to one another. So, a peer-to-peer, -peer, we're not going to follow the pattern for the crossover, which is 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 1, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 2, 7, 7, and 8, 8. You might be wondering, what are those patterns? Here is the catch. The first color here is orange. The second color is orange-white. The third color is green. At the other end, the pattern should be 1, 3, 
the third color here should be the first color here which is what is our third color here yes very good the third color here is green therefore the first color here should be green so let's try to untwist it So green is my first color. One, three. Therefore, that will be my first color. Next. One, three, two, six. One, one, two, orange. Two, one, white, orange. Two. So why uh, we have orange? Orange, white is the second one. The third one is green, the fourth one is white blue, the fifth one is blue, then the sixth one is white green. Therefore, six is white green. My second color here is white green. Look at white green. Therefore, white, green, then white green. There. One, three, two, six. This is the third color for this one. White green is my sixth color here. So one, three, two, six, three, one. My first color here is orange. Therefore, orange will be my third color at the other end. So this is orange. Therefore, there. So, one, three, the third color here, two, six is white green, the sixth color here. Then, three, one, the first color here is orange, that should be my third color here. So, one, three, two, six, three, one. Then, four, four. So, my fourth color here, so we have white, we have orange, white, orange, then green. Then, I have here blue, white, then blue. Or then we have blue, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue. So, white, blue. So, let's see. Four, four, white, blue. There. Five, five. Four, three, four, three, blue. There. Orange, orange, white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white. So, blue, white. So, three, two, four, four. Hi, hi. Thank you for your blue. 6-2. My second color here is orange-white. For my first color is orange. The second color is orange-white. Therefore, my sixth color here is... My seventh color there is brown. So, it should be brown. Then, my eighth color is brown-white. Therefore, there. So the pattern is one three. Third, my third color here is so white. I have here orange, orange white, then green. So that's why green is my first color. Two six. So my sixth color here is green white. That's why it is green white. Then two six. One three two six three one. My first color here is orange. That should be my third color. That's why 3, 1. So there. Then 4, 4, white, blue, white, blue. 5, 5 is blue, blue. Then 6, 2. My second color here is orange, white. Therefore, my sixth color here is orange, white. 7, 7, 7 is brown, brown. 8 is white, brown, then white, brown. 
So that is a cross comma pattern. It is not similar to the straight blue pattern. So the colors will be interchanged. That depends upon the pattern, the default pattern for cross copper. So since it has been arranged, so I have to straighten them up. Then cut them equally. Make sure, just make sure that the stripe colors will not be placed together. Okay? So always, always check first the colors if they are been or they have been arranged properly before you lock it or you grip it using the printing tool. Now, since I am sure that they have been arranged according to the pattern of the crossover, then I have to cut it for them to have the same sizes or the same length. Let's place it inside now. Push. Before you grip it, check the colors. If they are patterned according to the crossover pattern. So make sure that you're going to check the colors. You can check them at the back or you can check them like this one. Okay? If you think that they have been properly arranged according to the crossover pattern, then check, then lock it. So here we go. Test again using the tester. So again. You will know that the crossover pattern has been successfully created once you test it. So you will see the light. So it's one, three, two, six. So the light, they will not be having the same light for the pattern is one, three, two, six, three, one, three. Okay? So we have here the light here, then the other one is the light here. So one, three, two, six, three, one, four, four, five, five, six, three, seven, seven. So, so those are the different steps on how are you going to create a crossover pattern. So we have here the straight two and the crossover pattern. So please be reminded again that when you're going to create or network more than three computers or three or more computers, you have to use a straight two pattern. But if you're just going to connect one to two computers, use a crossover pattern. So I hope you've learned a lot on how are you going to create a land cube. Please be reminded that after working, you have to clean the surroundings. So remove all the clutter stains. So see, so you have to clean everything. If you're done cleaning already, again, please be reminded. Two things, please maintain cleanliness and safetyness of the person who is currently working on. So that would be all. Bye everyone and thank you for watching this.